Hey guys, Paul Gold here, and a uh, quick video for you about, believe it or not, some footwork. But um, people have asked me to do it, maybe dared me to do it, but with the sad passing of John Lord, the keyboard player from Deep Purple, uh, just yesterday, people have said, could you just, um, just bang something out on the guitar? We heard you played a bit of guitar. So here I am, a uh, little Les Paul here, in my son's bedroom actually so I've just quickly thrown the camera up and I'm just gonna bang out what is probably their most iconic tune maybe not their best tune but a simple one if anyone wants to know how to play it and annoy everyone in a guitar shop this is the song you need to play it's smoke on the water iconic tune probably the most famous guitar riff rock guitar riff ever Pretty simple to play, but it still sounds absolutely wicked. So let's try and wrap this up. Yeah, hope I'm not gonna kill all the neighbors off. Have a look out, I'm not sure they're uh, around. Should be at work anyway. So let's have a quick go, a bit of smoke on the water, and then we'll get back to some footwork. Let's try it out. So that was smoke on the water, something like that. I haven't played it in ages, but that was it. If my son sees this, he's going to say, why have you got my guitar out? Anyway, so a quick video for you about some footwork. Really important video because this is all about how most people really miss the point, but it's all explained in the video. Check it out. The 4G square is coming right at you. Leave me a comment below. I uh, hope you enjoy it. Uh, tell me about the guitar playing as well. Speak to you soon. I've seen it for years, and it's just unbelievable. It's like he's floating. It's almost like he barely he barely hits the court. I guess that's why he's played 51 majors in a row. Hi, it's Paul Gold here, creator of the Tennis Footwork Formula, and I want to talk to you today about the importance of footwork in tennis, and why most people actually get it wrong when it comes to not only improving their footwork, but actually how they do it and why they do it. By the end of this video, you'll be leaps and bounds ahead of everyone else because you're going to be able to take it to the next level to not only set yourself up to move better, but you're going to be able to integrate it into your game, which is a little clue behind why most people get it so very, very wrong. But let's move on. Now, I started this video with a really good quote and a clip featuring Roger Federer. And there was some commentary by John McEnroe, marveling about how good Federer's footwork was. And we're going to come back to that later. And while I can't guarantee you're ever going to be able to move as well as Roger Federer, what I will say is that you're certainly going to be able to move better than you do at the moment. And you already know, I'm pretty sure, how much of an impact that will have on your game. You're going to be able to raise the level of your game because footwork is the one thing that does affect everything else in your game. And as I keep saying, that's why it's such a great leverage point. So just concentrating on your footwork, it's going to move the dial across the rest of your game so that you can actually be playing on a much, much higher level. 
So what exactly is it then that everyone else is getting wrong? Well, most people actually think that to improve their footwork, you should do a whole bunch of drills, just like the drill you can see on the screen at the moment. And yes, that will improve your footwork if you do them the right way. But the problem is, it doesn't guarantee that you're going to be able to put it into your game effectively. Now, being able to move quicker with a little bit more agility, which is really the only thing you can hope to do if you're actually just going to use agility drills and footwork drills, is okay. But I want you to raise it to the next level. And I want you to actually start integrating what I call the 4G square. Now the 4G square basically outlines how each tennis point is played and how your footwork links each part of each stroke. So what exactly is the 4G square? So let me just bring up this quick screen that will walk you through it and you'll be able to see how it all works. Now the first G of the 4Gs is the get ready. Once you get this down, you're going to be able to be in a great position to react to any ball that comes your way. And if you think about it, if you don't get this phase right, the rest of the stroke and the rest of the point is pretty much a situation of you playing catch up. So once I teach you this, you're going to be in a great position to set the whole point off in the right tone and hopefully in a dominant position. So let's look at getting ready. And the first thing that I often talk about is you really have to get ready from the eyes down. And I know that's nothing to do with your feet, but if you're really not activated on the eyes, it's pretty unlikely that your feet and therefore the rest of you is gonna be able to follow along. So get ready with the eyes is the first thing you need to do. And then moving on from there is you must get yourself into an active athletic position. So what is the athletic position? Well, the athletic position is where you've got your feet generally a little bit wider than shoulder width. You have a nice flex in the knees. Your knees are not locked out, they're slightly bent. You've also got your weight slightly forwards and that allows you to be much more reactive. And we call it an active athletic stance because you should also be moving, not just static. You should be bouncing around on the balls of your feet and that means that you're able to react in any direction should you need to. So let's get you starting off every single point and every single shot in every point in the right way because if you do that you really will start cutting down on those unforced errors because often people start a point in the wrong way like i said earlier they're playing catch up and it's an unforced error or an advantage to the opponent in the beginning and that really is not what you want to do so two things i want you to do as a consequence of watching this video and they are one make sure you're engaged with your eyes well before you settle down ready to receive the ball if it's a receiving of a ball or before your opponent hits the next ball now once you're engaged with the eyes and once you do that a few times you'll really begin to make that a habit then i want you to always be into that athletic position that active athletic position you've got your knees bent your weight slightly forward your hands out in front just those two things will make a huge difference to your game. You're really going to stick into points a lot longer and cut down on all those silly mistakes that we all make when we don't do these two very simple things. So, in the next video, I'm going to show you what the second G in our 4G square is and how we can tack that on to what we've learned today to compound the whole effectiveness of this very simple but yet very powerful footwork strategy that almost nobody else knows and certainly no one else teaches so till the next time leave me a comment below facebook like if you've got a facebook account and go out start implementing the first g on our 4g square and i'll speak to you on the next video